welcome to the it's Tom Doherty here from the Foxford Traditional Weekend. So uh, we're coming to you virtually here. We're normally having a great weekend in here in Foxford. So the accordion workshop today. Uh, what might we try? Um, that tune there is called the Green Groves of Air, and we might have a go at that. Um, I usually play a C sharp D accordion. Maybe uh, this is the usual usual accordion I play. Uh, first thing maybe having a look at uh, holding the accordion. Like different people will hold the instrument different, depending on your style of music and the type of instrument you're playing. So if I'm playing this, playing this my regular accordion, I uh, I'm holding the holding it with one strap on. Now this this corner of the accordion is pushed into my outer leg here. So when I push in the accordion, um, it's pushing into my leg. So it's gone off my lap. So I just push down this small bit. It's gone off my lap here and pushed right over, and then I tilt the accordion forward. So this corner here. Is pushing into my leg here. So you can see where the pressure is coming on. Now when I'm pushing pushing in and out the accordion, the accordion is going, it's more of that kind of a motion with the bellows. It's not, it's not, it's not out, it's not out. So we're trying to get rid of all this slackness. Uh, don't want any of that slack. So a nice tight so it'll respond, respond the way you want it to. Um, so the bottom of the bellows is closed really most of the time. So that, that action again is a kind of a down. I'm talking a down, kind of a down outward action. Down. When you're going out you're kind of keeping a down pressure. So we can see it there yeah. So this hand is not really being used to control the accordion. So then I keep this, keep uh, keep my thumb there on the outside of the keyboard. Um, it gives you plenty of scope. If your thumb is there, it gives you plenty of scope for up and down. So now if I was using the, the other accordion, I might use it's a bigger accordion so I might be inclined to use two straps on it and the accordion is sitting on my lap here and I'm more in that position I'm more inclined to <laughs> to put the put the hand behind my thumb actually thumb behind the keyboard. Um that's with the bigger the bigger accordion. Now it depends on what style of music really you're playing or what you know, different accordion players will do it different ways. Um, this is how I do it, I guess. Uh, the left hand then. So basically, I want to keep this, uh, the strap here, keep that nice and tight as well. So we don't have any looseness there. So I actually use my small finger. You can see where the accordion is worn here. To keep, I kind of press there with my small finger. To keep pressure on the strap, that kind of tightens up. It tightens up that strap on the left hand, uh, like that. Yeah, so if I'm using the bass then, say, on this accordion, I'm only really on any three fingers. So I would use... Uh, so, it should be, say, those two fingers for the two bottom ones, and those two for there. So there's only three fingers being used. Also, um, I would tend to use the in uh, the inner part of the finger for that, so I can get so you're kind of getting two. You're getting uh, rather than having to move your move your fingers like that, you can kind of use this part, this part of the finger here for using the for getting at the outer row, say. So uh, with the bass as well, this uh, this accordion, the way I've tuned, the thirds are knocked out of the chords in the in the basses. Uh, 
So it's more suitable for playing tunes in major or minor. And then if you want it major up a tune, you can add in other, you'll find. You'll find other majors to add in. G major up. By playing three notes. So that's just maybe something with the bass there, yeah. Um, yeah, this accordion, it would be over here like that. Tilted out, I'd have it tilted out like that. So as the pressure is going, all the pressure is going on down, down here, yeah. Um, we might have a look at that tune, that tune I was looking at today. Uh, it is, it's called the, I played earlier there, is the Green Groves of Erden. Now the notes are posted up on the Foxworth Traditional Weekend site. Uh, and I'll just make sure that they, you can get a link to those. Um, now I guess mo most accordion players that might be tuning in are BC players. I play both systems. Uh, I played BC for years and then changed over to C sharp D. There's advantages, disadvantages. I find, I suppose, rhythm-wise, probably can get more rhythm out of the C sharp D. Um, you can play in any key on on either system. Like uh, changing, uh, changing, changing between the two systems, the B, B and C, C sharp D are. It's a big transition, really, uh, because it's just a different way of thinking. Although all you're doing is playing in, in a different key. Um, Making the transition from B C to C sharp D would might give you the advantage of being able to play easy enough in E flat. So you could play see all you're doing instead of going out for your F sharp, you can go in the way for your sharps or whatever, and then rather than coming out like so you've gone in, say for your F sharp if you were a B C player, you've gone in the way rather than coming out the way. So if you do that. On the outside row, playing in the way, you're automatically, everything has gone up a half a semitone. Um, so the the tune, the Green Groves of Erin, I might to try that on the on the BC there. As I guess most people that, most people that are joining, joining in there are uh, BC players. So we just give, maybe give a run through that and then maybe look at applying some rhythm to that or... Uh, Trying to get the most out of it. Yeah, so the notes should be up available online there on the Fox with Traditional Weekend page. So maybe if I go through it slowly, just play that. Play it through it nice and slow. in the notes as well, a GBG, if, but it's important to get that, get the B on the outside row there. Trying to change fingers on the same button, which brings leaves this finger free down there when you're coming down. GBG to be on the outside row.
Okay, so you can go through that again, I guess, in your own time. Um, second part, you try the second part, so. I think you've that marked in in the notes as well. A G, B, G there, so your B on the outside row. So that's your traditional rolls there. Yeah, there's kind of two shapes to the rolls. So that shape where you have two notes on the inside and one on the lower on the outside. Yeah, so it's starting on and finishing on the same note. A roll. Um are there the other shape then for the rolls? Will be like what I call the triangle, like G roll there. These are just rolls. It's not that they're in that in that tune. Just for anybody that's uh, just to give you an idea of the rolls there. Now, often times as well, uh, usually actually they're kind of more traditional rolls. The rolls I would use would be more of what I'd be using, uh, changing fingers on the same button. So you got. You're changing, you're playing same button, but you're playing using different fingers on it. And a roll might uh, a roll might be to make more of a roll out of that. You might uh, play using two notes. So like A B A, and finishing off with the first finger. So the advantage with that you get you get a roll on any on any on any note really. Um so that's kind of like two note rolls. It's the same thing anywhere, you get them anywhere in the party. Um so that's kind of that kind of idea of using using uh changing the fingers on the same button. So I hope that's kind of giving you some ideas there or something. Um, so I would use that. I'd use that a lot where I'd be changing fingers on the same on the same buttons, especially like maybe if you have two notes as we did there in the beginning of that green groves, where you where you're moving down the way. So you're kind of moving. You have two notes that are the same. Might be playing two E's there and then moving E E. So it frees up this finger coming down here. Or the same if you were going the opposite way, you might be. Going freeing up fingers down the bottom, depending on which direction you're going, you can be freeing up fingers in that in that direction. Um that's something to work on maybe, yeah. Um what else there? So yeah, with the likes of that reel now to kinda it's one thing getting it you know, getting the notes off. Getting it to sound well then rhythm wise. It needs I'd like I like a lot of rhythm in the tune. So to get that rhythm <coughs> get that rhythm out of the tune it's basically um, you're emphasizing emphasizing notes. So with the reel, it's like da 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 da
So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now, if I'm playing the tune slowly from the notes, I might be inclined to emphasize the ones. So the one is where the first has happened. Da, da, ba, de, do, da, ba, do, do, da, ba, de, do, da. Yeah, to get the speed up then in the tune, I'd usually be emphasizing the, the, the three. Emphasizing that three. <clears throat> so now, when that comes into actually getting that across on the accordion, basically, might be easier, this accordion is more in tune. Um, it would be, so it's basically, that's going to come from the left hand. So it's basically giving that, getting that pulse into it, that pulse of the rhythm. It's like, one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four two three da ba two two da ba two two da ba two two da ba. So getting that pulse in means applying like twice the pressure on that three. Uh, when you're hitting that three, whatever note falls on the three, it's getting twice twice the pressure on the bellows. So whether it's in or out, two two da ba two two da ba two two da ba two two da ba. You're giving it twice the pressure on that actual note. <laughs> It's probably easier when the when the tune is being played. It's uh, it's it's hard to dis might be harder to distinguish that. But basically, to kind of demonstrate it on one one button, like using this kind of uh, using change of the fingers on the on one note, you get to be able to hear the rhythm. Yeah. that pulse coming into it so that's that's what we want to get on the line the tune the whole time getting that rhythm into it um so that's like the three you're hitting on the three there one two three four one two three four two two oh, sorry for this say for the green gloves it'll be a minor That's trying to get that pulse into it. Um, yeah, so I hope you're getting some ideas from that, maybe something you might be able to pick up from it. Um, now when I play when you lie the tune on top of that, it's not quite as obvious. You're, you're not really hearing the and as I say, the that pull that's coming from like nearly twice the pressure. Uh, on the left hand, on whatever one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, whether it's in or out or whatever, whatever note falls falls on that. Um, I guess yeah, I'm, I like I like a lot of rhythm in the tune. This I I like this accordion. It gives me there's a lot of uh, dynamic response from it. It will respond. Some of some bigger accordions might give a full a fuller sound and on their own and. Uh, but can be sometimes it can be harder to get get that rhythm out of them. There might be less or a big sound up front, whereas this accordion that I usually play, there's a lot of dynamic response in it. Like, uh, so it will respond to that kind of when you give it give it the the rhythm from the left hand, it'll respond. Um, so yeah, you might be getting some ideas from that. Uh, it depends on your style, really. Uh, if you're playing a big more polysymphonic, you're not going to be looking for that as much rhythm. And this, I suppose, the C sharp D lends itself a bit more to that, to that kind of thing as well. That that style, the C sharp D, probably more rhythmic style. Um, go back to the B C there again, yeah. Um, So there's all different ways you can, you know, polish up the tune or, you know, add ornamentation of doing whatever. Um, yeah, I might just, we got through it again slowly and slowly. Now I'm applying there and making sure it's on the three.
on the changing fingers. Yeah, so also then with the left hand, the air button there. Um, so I would, yeah, as I was saying, keep, keeping that strap tight by using the small finger here to keep pressure out on the strap, keeping everything nice and firm and tight. So the air button there is kind of, your thumb is on the air button there all the time, and that can be in action a lot of the time. Not in, it mightn't be just a case of uh, that it's taking a big breath or when you need when you need it basically i would be using the air button is kind of when you press it down fully you get you do get it you get a lot of air uh but you can also have it in play a lot of the time while the tune is going on so it's kind of half half pressed that one is a bit squeaky so uh so it's kind of half pressed as the tune is going on it's kind of up and down with What's needed, basically, to keep the keep it in a controlled position, regarding. So it might be it might be half pressed, and you're only getting half as much air. And if pressing it fully, then you get a full. But I, as I say, when I like when I be playing, it is in action most of the time. It's not that it's just when you need to take it, uh, when you do need to get air or whatever. Um, so I hope that's maybe given you some uh, some ideas or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll have one last run. So so maybe if that green groves of air and yeah. And as I said, the uh, notes are up there on the on the Foxford Traditional Weekend page. So uh, yeah, we we'll give it one more run run together. So.
Okay, we might leave it at that, so. Uh, thanks very much, and I hope uh, next year we'll see a lot of people in Foxford for the Foxford Traditional Weekend. And enjoy the rest of the weekend. There's a few other things happening on the weekend. Uh, so, for me, hope you enjoy that and over, over and up for now. Thank you.